The Ottawa Senators made a ton of major moves in the offseason, so I'm going to take over and complete the rebuild. Let's get to work. The first thing we got to do, of course, is give Debrinket that extension. Seven years at 9.4 million per, and Formington, I'm giving you three years at 1.7 million per. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate through the first 10 games and we'll see how the teams are looking. Through the first 10, we're looking pretty solid with a 7-3 and three record. And of course, over the next 15, we're doing fantastic. 9-4-2 and, and things are looking pretty good. Through 50 games with a 33-15-2 record, we're sitting second in the Atlantic and third in the entire league. Claude Giroux is leading the way with 18 goals and 37 helpers for 55 points, while DeBrincat's picking up 50 points consisting of 20 goals and 30 helpers. And Thomas Shabbat, he's rounding up the top three while leading the defense. Six goals and 42 assists for 48 points. Cam Talbot's doing his thing in net so far. 24 wins with a 9 no 7 save percentage and a 309 goals against. And I just want to mention the reason the goals against is so bad is because I had to turn scoring frequency to high because if you keep it on medium then Austin Matthews will only score 37 goals. So we'll go ahead and simulate to the trade deadline and honestly I don't really want to go all in yet but I do want to make at least one move. Over the next 11 we weren't looking too hot as we were going 6 and 5 but I do want to make one move and it's a big one. Two seconds and a prospects off to Vancouver for Bo Horvat. He's going to be our new second line center and I think that's a major upgrade for us. And I'm also sending Zaitsev to the pens for a 7th. And 7 7th round picks are the equivalent of gold because I'm flipping three of them into a second round pick. Three seventh round picks is the equivalent of a second rounder. That makes zero sense whatsoever. But hey, I'm gonna abuse the system if you allow me to. And Bo Horvat, I want to keep you around, my guy. Five years at 5.5. Welcome to the team. When the season came to an end with a 48, 30, and 4 record, we're sitting fourth in the Atlantic and seventh in the entire league. Claude Giroux led the way with 82 points, consisting of 26 goals and 56 helpers, while Thomas Shabbat's leading the defense with 12 goals and 53 helpers for 65 points. Cam Talbot, you held it down in net 35 wins with a 902 save percentage and a 326 goals against, but I'm going to keep it a stack. I'm not sure if we can win a Stanley Cup with those numbers. Taking a look at the entire league, Austin Matthews is leading the way. 75 goals, 55 assists, 130 points. This is the main issue I have with having scoring frequency at high, is Austin Matthews putting up like 75 goals and 130 points. It just seems a little too unrealistic, but I mean, I think this is a bit more realistic than him only scoring 37, let's be fair. Mitch Marner is partner in crime is also having a great season, 128 points, while Nathan McKinnon's rounding out the top three with 50 goals and 61 one helpers for 111 points. Dougie Hamilton's leading the defense with 26 goals and 56 assists for 82 points. While Samsonov, he's picking up 44 wins with a 906 save percentage and a 304 goals against to lead all goaltenders in wins. So heading into the playoffs, we're taking on Toronto in the first round, and I refuse to lose to Toronto. Not only are we going to beat this team, we're sweeping them. But before we get into our first playoff run, make sure you subscribe. I'm going to be dropping franchise videos throughout the course of NHL 23, so if you want to keep up with those, make sure you subscribe and turn notifications on. And drop a like as well. Let's get a thousand likes for the first rebuild of NHL 23. Game one's looking great. A 27 save show from Talbot. We only have three more to go. I guess we won't be sweeping them because Sam Sonoff just picked up a shutout and the series is square at one game apiece. Two Norse goals is helping us take a 2-1 series lead and then Stutzel's going to pot the OT winner and we're one game away from advancing. In game five, a 4-2 win's going to allow us to advance and we're smoking that Leafs pack. In the second round, we got Florida. That shouldn't be an issue. Ottawa's going to take an important game one, five to three, and things are looking great. The Sens continue to roll, and we're taking a close game two, four to three. A Norris lone goal in the third period is going to put us up three games to none, and in game four, it's a high scoring one, but we're taking it eight to six, and we're completing that sweep. I'm going to keep it 100. If you told me at the beginning of this video we would be in the conference finals in year one, I would have laughed at you. Like, our defense is abysmal, but hey, here we are. Game one was a tough one. Jacob Slavin's spot in the OT winner, and they're taking a 1 0 series lead. And then a Ryan Dezingle hat trick is going to put us down two games to none. We're not getting cooked by Ryan Dezingle here. We have to bounce back. We're taking game three, five to three, but we're still down two games to one. In game four, Florida is going to take over. They're potting four third period goals, and we're pushed to the brink of elimination. But we're going to survive another day with a 6 4 win. In game six, though, the Canes are shutting the door, and we're falling in a 7 3 loss. When the playoffs came to an end, Vegas is winning the cup in six games. Honestly, I'm actually pretty happy with how the team performed, and we're going to build on this momentum heading into next season. Stutzel, you did your thing in the postseason. 7 goals, 11 assists, 18 points, keep it up my guy. And Jack Eichel, 25 points to lead all postseason scores. Not only did you win the cup, but you finally made the playoffs. Congrats my guy. And Robbie Leonard, you're the man. 16 wins, a 925 save percentage, at 249 goals against. Congrats on the Stanley Cup. Taking a look at the draft lottery results, Philly's getting the first overall pick. That's a bit more realistic than them finishing first overall in the entire league. Before we get to the draft, I gotta give out an extension. Brandstrom, you were looking great last season, so I'm giving you 6.4 million per year for the next five. Heading into the draft, we've got four picks to use, but our best prospect ended up being a low elite potential left winger. Since the draft didn't go great for us, we gotta make some moves. Docker, I'm giving you two years at 1.4 million. So Josh Norris, I think you could be a great part of this team, but we're in a cap situation now. So I'm shipping you alongside with a fourth to Boston for Carlo. We need a defensive defenseman and I'm sorry but I don't know how this team's gonna work next season. Like we have literally 90% of our cap tied up to the forward core. We have no defensemen. 
Jari, I'm giving you two years at 4.8. We need a better goaltender. And then Forsberg, you're off to the Bruins for a third. But actually, I think I can do a bit better than that. So I'm going to send Forsberg in a seventh to Boston for a second. So all I had to do was include a seventh round pick and I can turn that third into a second. That makes lots of sense. Shane Pinto, two years at 1.9 million. Gambrell, one year at 2 million. Skinner, 925k for one year. Thompson, three years at 1 million. And our final move is a fourth, a prospect, a fifth and a sixth is going to the Ducks for Vakananen. I probably said that wrong, but bro, I can't pronounce that. I feel like our team's in a better spot than last season. We might have lost Norris, but our defense is way better. And I think Tristan Jari can be the guy for us. Tristan Jari is clearly not the guy. We're starting three and seven, and I think I might trade him. Bro, you're hot garbage. You keep this up and you're gone. Like, no cap. I have no time for this. I'll simulate up to the 25 game mark. And if you continue to play like crap, you're gone. Over the next 15 games, we weren't looking great with a seven and eight record. So you know what that means. Jari, you're off to Columbus for Merzlikens and Brenstrom. I don't even care about that extra player but I just want Merzlikens to play better than you. So at the 50 game mark, everything's falling apart. 22, 25, and three, seventh in the Atlantic, 21st in the entire league. What happened to this team? Thomas Shabbat's leading the team at points, and that means he's leading the defense, of course. 13 goals, 35 helpers, 48 points. Giroux's picking up 47 points, and so is Dabrinkat. Well, Merzlikens, he's picked up 10 wins with an 897 save percentage and a 329 goals against. So honestly, everyone on this team is underperforming, except for Shabbat. Keep doing your thing, my guy, you're dominating. So heading towards the trade deadline, I'm not gonna make any moves. This team's clearly not gonna win this season, and I might even have to sell. Over the next 14 games, we weren't looking that great, as so we're going six and eight. Honestly, I kinda wanna sell at the trade deadline, but I don't want to make any rash decisions, so we're not making any moves, and we're just simming to the end of the season. When the season came to an end, we should have sold. 33, 45, and 4, 8th in the Atlantic, 30th in the entire league. What happened to this team? I thought I made us a lot better. I clearly didn't. To bring out, you did what you could. 29 goals and 44 helpers for 78 points. With Shabbat, 73 points. Nothing to be ashamed about. David Pasternak, however, you were an absolute beast. 52 goals, 68 assists, 120 points. Keep up the good work, my guy. Marchand's coming in second. 44 goals and 70 assists for 114 points. And Nathan McKinnon, he's picking up 113 points. You love to see it. Charlie McAvoy's leading all defensemen. 14 goals and 64 assists for 78 points. While Shesterkin's leading all goaltenders in wins. 43 with a 915 save percentage and a 273 goals against. When the playoffs came to an end, the Ducks are completely the fastest rebuild I've ever seen as they're beating the New York Rangers in seven games. And I'm going to make a statement here. We're not missing the playoffs for the rest of this video. We're making it back to the postseason next season, and we might even try to win a Stanley Cup. I don't think we'll be able to rebuild that quick, but there's no reason we should have been this bad. Pernarin, you were absolutely fantastic in the postseason. 38 points, 14 goals, 24 assists. Too bad you couldn't win a Stanley Cup. While John Gibson, 16 wins, a 915 save percentage, and 267 goals against. Congrats on the Cup. So I don't think this has ever happened for me before. We're jumping from three to one. I've dropped from one to three, but I've never gone up from three to one. I guess NHL 23 is a new game and it's trying to make up for all the times it screwed me so far. So we had five picks in the draft, but I'm an elite GM, so I made amazing picks. Of course, the first overall pick's a medium elite defensive defenseman. That doesn't require any work, but then I scored a medium elite right winger, and then a low elite defenseman, and then another low elite defenseman. So of the five picks we had, four of them have elite potential. I would say that's some elite drafting. Okay, I'm done saying elite for the rest of this video. Now we gotta give out some extensions. Bamstrom, one year at 975k. Skinner, two years at 1.1 million. Ross Levick, one year at 3.7 million. Muzzin one year at 4.3 and Wood three years at 1.7. We're not going to talk about what happened last season. It's time to move on and get it together. We have Stanley Cup ambitions and anything less is a fail. And I still haven't figured out what happened last season because that was absolutely abysmal. So I don't really know what to say about it. To start this season off though, things are looking great. We're 7-1-2 and two, and I think we've got it together. And Vakananen, I'm giving you a one-year deal at 1.2 million. He was an RFA and was trying to hold out, but I didn't fold. And we're signing him to a one-year deal. He was asking for a three-year deal at 4 million per. So I think this is a good deal for us. But since signing him, things kind of went downhill as we went six. 8 and 1 over the next 15. Through 50 games though, I can't complain. 26, 18, and 6. Fourth in the Atlantic, eighth in the entire league. Things are looking all right. Drew's leading the way with 19 goals and 25 helpers for 54 points. While Brady Kachuk's picking up 45 points, consisting of 25 goals and 20 assists. Debrinket's going to round out the top three. 18 goals and 26 assists for 44 points. While Thomas Shabbat's leading the defense with 33 points. And Elvis Merzlikens, he's picked up 19 wins with a 905 save percentage and a 310 goals against. I'm still not convinced that he can be the guy for us, though. So heading towards the trade deadline, I'm not too sure what to do. I don't want to sell because we can clearly compete. Pete, but I also don't want to go all in yet if we can't win. So we'll see how things go heading into the trade deadline and then we'll make moves based on that. Over the next 11 games, we're looking average with a 6-5 and five record, but I got to make one move because I saw this guy was available. Merzlikens in a second, you're off to Nashville and I'm bringing in UC Soros. And Soros, I'm giving you that 6 year extension for 8.4 million. I know you can be the guy for us. I have zero questions about that, so we'll simulate to the end of the season and then go on a run. When the season came to an end, we're finishing with a 43-33-6 record, 5th in the Atlantic, 
Galactic 13th in the entire league. I was expecting a bit better, not gonna lie. I was kind of let down by this. Giroud is having another fantastic season. 31 goals and 54 assists for 85 points, while Thomas Shabbat's picking up 63 points, consisting of 11 goals and 52 assists to lead the defense. And UC Saro, since being acquired, 10 wins, a 913 save percentage, a 304 goals against, a bit of a letdown, not gonna lie. Leading the entire league in points is Miko Rantanen, 51 goals and 56 assists for 107 points. Oh, McDavid, he's tied with 107 points. 46 goals, 61 assists, keep doing your thing. And Brad Marchand, he's gonna round out the top three with 105 points. Quinn Hughes was absolutely dominating this season. He's leading all defense with 96 points, consisting of eight goals and 87 assists. Well, Vasilevsky, he's picking up 50 wins with a 916 save percentage and a 263 goals gains. In the first round, we're taking on the goalie that just had 50 wins as we're playing the Tampa Bay Lightning. In game one, a lease and OT winners giving Tampa a 1-0 lead and then a 22 save Vasilevsky shutouts putting us down two games to none. We're going to avoid falling to a 3-0 deficit as we're potting four unanswered to keep us in the series and then a late push isn't enough and we're evening the series in game four at two games apiece. Vasilevsky's going to take over in game five though he's picking up 28 saves and he's shutting us out once again and in game six five third period goals is going to send us home. When the playoffs came to an end the Phillies completed probably the fastest rebuild of all time as they're winning the Stanley Cup. That might be even faster than Anaheim's last year but I'm going to keep it a stack. There's no way Chuck Fletcher's still the GM. There's there's no way they win a cup with him manning the ship. Leading us in postseason scoring was Thomas Shabbat. He's picking up six helpers for six points, while Trevor Zegers is leading all postseason scores. 11 goals, 14 assists, 25 points. Too bad you couldn't win back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, my guy. While Carter Hart, he was the guy. 16 wins, a 9.25 save percentage, a 230 goals against. Congrats on the Stanley Cup. So before we get to the draft and the draft lottery, we're gonna make some moves. Formanton, two years at 2 million. Docker, two years at 4.3 million. Bemstrom, one year at 1 million. Vakanen, three years at 2.75 million. I really don't care if I've been saying his name wrong this entire time. I probably have been. Well, actually, I know I have been, but yeah, you try to pronounce that without looking it up. And then Shane Pinto, 1.7 million per year for the next two. Taking a look at the draft lottery results, Jersey's getting the first overall pick. We had three picks in the upcoming draft, but there was no one notable, so we made some moves. Vakanen, I'm sending you to Nashville for two thirds. Now I don't have to say that name anymore. I'm actually kind of happy about that. Thompson's off to the Ducks for two thirds as well. And then a second, a third, two prospects, and a fifth is off to Arizona for Gunther. He's going to be a major help to this team, and I think he might be the missing piece. Giroux, I'm going to sign you to a one year deal where 7.2 million. Kai in. I'm going to sign you to your rookie deal. Probably said that name wrong as well, but who cares? And then two thirds, Reinhardt and a fourth is off to Chicago for Bodine. It's all or nothing this season. I think this is the best roster we've ever had. And Saros, I need you to carry the way, my guy. And Saros has definitely been carrying the way. Through the first 10, we're 8 and 2, and I think we have a chance at a cup this season. Over the next 10, things are looking even better. 10, 2, and 3 and it's our year. Through 50 games, we're one of the best teams in the league. 32, 13, and 5. First in the Atlantic, second in the entire league, and the team's rolling. Debrinket, he's leading the way. 34 goals and 33 helpers for 67 points. Well, Giroux's coming in second with 60 points, consisting of 14 goals and 44 helpers. And Brady Kachuk, he's not too far behind rounding out the top three. 58 points, consisting of 25 goals and 33 helpers. Thomas Shabbat, of course, is leading the defense. He's picked up 31 points. Well, UC Saros, he's been the guy. 27 wins, a 908 save percentage, a 278 goals against. Keep up the great work, my guy. Heading towards the trade deadline i'm honestly contemplating not making any moves the team's looking great right now we're rolling and i don't want to screw anything up but the fact that we just went five six and two over the next 13 games is making me a bit nervous but i'm not going to fold to the pressure of this team sucking over the past 13 games we're sticking with the team we got and we're making no moves when the season came to an end we're dominating the atlantic 48 27 and 7 first in the atlantic of course and fourth in the entire league to break out was the guy for us 47 goals 48 helpers 95 points keep up the great work and shabbat 59 points to lead the defense keep doing your thing. And UC Saros, thank you for carrying the team. 40 wins, a 908 save percentage, a 290 goals against. We're ready to win that Stanley Cup. Looking at the entire league, Connor McDavid's leading the way with 135 points, consisting of 58 goals and 77 helpers. Dude was an absolute beast this season. With Dreisaitl, he's picking up 130 points, not too far behind. You were also a beast. My god, this Oilers team must be elite. And rounding out the top three is, of course, Kyler Yamamoto. This is my main issue with having scoring frequency on high. There's no reason Kyle Yamamoto should have 114 points. Taking a look at all defensemen, Adam Fox is leading the way. 16 goals, 65 assists, 81 points. Keep doing your thing. And Jack Campbell, 45 wins, a 908 save percentage, and a 282 goals against to lead all goaltenders and wins. So here we go. First round, we got the New York Rangers. The Rangers are taking game one with the help of a Lafreniere OT winner, but three on answer is going to even the series for us. The Rangers decide to match it and get three on answer of their own to take a 2-1 series lead. But we're not folding. We're potting three on answer 
answered in game four and we're evening the series at two games apiece. Panarin's going to pot a hat trick in game five and that's going to put us on the brink of elimination but you know what we do. Three unanswered and we're evening the series and we're forcing game seven. And in game seven, Claude Giroux is going to be the OT hero. He's sending us to the next round and we're taking on Tampa Bay. It's time for a revenge tour. Odd was going to steal game one with the help of a Giroux hat trick and then four unanswered is giving us a 2-0 series lead. Tampa decided to match our four unanswered with four unanswered of their own and they're avoiding falling to a 3-0 deficit. A 4-0 lead is going to be too much to overcome for us and Tampa is going to even the series at two games apiece. Six goals is going to be more than enough though and we're one game away from the conference finals but a goal in each period for Tampa is going to force game seven. In game seven, Bo Horvat's going to pot two goals and that's going to send us to the conference finals. So here we are at the conference finals and we're taking on the New York Islanders. Not going to lie, the fact that we've played 14 games so far in two rounds is a bit concerning to me. I feel like by the time we get to the Stanley Cup final, this team's going to be dead tired. Game one was an important one and we're taking a close one four to three. But in game two, a Lowry third period goal is going to steal game two and even up the series for the Island. So far, every game has been close and game three is another close one, but the Islanders are coming out on top three to two and they're taking a 2-1 series lead. However, Ottawa is not ready to fold. They're going to even the series in game four and we're down to a best of three. In game five, a 4-0 lead is going to be too much to overcome and we're put on the brink of elimination. But in game six, eight goals is going to be more than enough and we're off to our third game seven of the postseason. Honestly, at this point, we're just built different. We're winning the series and we're off to the Stanley Cup final. And in the final, we're taking on Elvis Merzlikens and the Nashville Predators, but we got UC Soros, so we got the better goalie of the two and we're ready to win ourselves the Stanley Cup and hopefully not play seven more games. All right, so Nashville just lit up Soros. I'm a bit concerned now. And then Morgan Geeky's pot in an OT winner and we're down two games to none. Luckily, four on answer is going to keep us in the series in game three and then Stutzel's pot in the OT winner in game four and we're even at two games apiece. The Senators continue to roll as the 3-0 lead after one period is going to put us one game away from hoisting the Stanley Cup, but it wouldn't be an Ottawa Senators rebuild without us going to our fourth game seven. So far, we've played 27 games in the playoffs. We're about to play our 28th game and win our fourth game seven. Let's finish this thing. So in game seven, we're doing what we normally do. We're coming out on top once again and we're Stanley Cup champions. Giroux led the way, 14 goals, 14 assists, 28 points. Great work, my guy. And Saros, you're the man. Congrats, my guy, on a Stanley Cup. 16 wins, a 918 save percentage, and 266 goals against. We wouldn't have been able to do it without you. Nah, but real talk, four game sevens is crazy. But hey, a win is a win is a win is a win.